Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Yes, sir. He has an Oscar, Golden Globe, Emmy, and Grammy. Our brother coming. Peace, what up, y'all? Peace, Welcome. King. How are you? Peace, King. I'm great, man. God is great. Absolutely. Good got- to see you, brother. Yeah, I'm great. I'm glad glad to see you, bro. Glad to see all y'all. Man. You got let love have the last word. Yes, sir. What he came in bo- here with love for all of us too this morning. <laughs> sure did. Yes, sir. The, that's the book, man. <clears throat> oh, excuse me, y'all. That's the book, man. Yeah. So I'm I'm excited about it. let love have the last word. What's the deeper meaning of that title? Well, the title is really it really comes from like all the stuff that's going on in the world. A lot of things been feeling heavy. A lot of people, you know, a lot of conversations about attacks is going on in the world politics and um i just felt like man the best thing we can do to overcome a lot of this anxiety and depression is is man put love out there not love like in the in the like just mushy all uh, love lovey dovey way but it's like love in action like man like respecting each other loving each other loving yourself you know that that real work so i just felt like man this is the I, I want to put positive energy out there in, in a world where time seems so dark. Well, forgiveness is part of that. Yes, sir. So, so are you a forgiving person? I definitely, I believe I am. I work towards it for sure. I, I strive to practice it. And that's what the, this whole book for me is like, it's just me telling my stories and, and, and the journey for what I had to do to practice and what I do to practice. It's not always, I'm not always succeeding at it, but mm-hmm. I'm striving towards it. And the places I have succeeded, I want to tell those stories. So people that go through it, they feel like, Man, I, I I understand. Like, I ain't gonna always have it perfect because love is a daily practice. Mm-hmm. Like, one day I might be feeling like everything is good and at mm-hmm. peace, and I've used my forgiveness and I forgave somebody or a situation. And the next moment I might be feeling something different. So I gotta have the tools to to work through those situations. What allowed you to to be able to start forgiving people? Because I feel like. We always resent something or we, we yeah. resent somebody. What what made you open up and be like, you know what, I gotta let those feelings go? Man, I um I think at certain points I found myself in in patterns, you know, stuck in the same place. And I was like, man, what can I do to to get out of this? Mm-hmm. Like what can I like what what things do I need to do to take steps to be like a better person? Cause if I'm doing the same thing, whether it's in relationships or dealing with my fatherhood, my, or dealing with, you know, even friends that I've been in, into it with. Mm-hmm. I was, and and it, ultimately it was like, man, I don't want to be that, I don't want to carry that, like, because that mm-hmm. resentment mm-hmm. and that and that anger and all that. It's a burden to bear. It's, it's a, yeah, it's a burden, you carrying weight. Mm-hmm. And then when you release that, man, you just feel a certain peace, man. You just, I, and ultimately, man, I'm like, man, I want, I want to be at peace, and I want to see people at peace, so. I just feel like I do that work because that work is allows me to find a greater peace. You know what I thought about? Uh, I went to see you at the Riverside Church on Monday, mm-hmm. and you told this story about why you say love all the time. And I was like, damn, Common ain't lying, because that was just I know Common. Any interview, he always ends it with love. Yeah, uh, yeah. He, love. Like, yeah. You always end it with that. But tell yeah. him why you do that. Yeah, one of, my, one of my homies I grew up with named Dart, like, he from the South Side with me. He was like, he a raw dude. Like, he was, mm-hmm. just, he was, he was a hustler. He lived a street life. He a good brother though, and, and when we was in high school, he always was like, man, yo, we need to start saying love, man. And this the dude, you know, Dark honestly, like he been shot five times, mm-hmm. but he was still on some like, yo, we gonna start saying love, man. And it just kind of stuck with me, cause it was like another way of of just, you know, extending it to the, to whoever, my homies, mm-hmm. to strangers, I mean, I right, love. Cause it's like, I'd rather, I, I feel like I'd rather say something good to somebody than than, than bad, you know? Mm-hmm. And I feel like even living with that energy of putting that out there, I started to live it more. And and I think people feel it, you know? So I'll be like, yo, love. I say that, get off the phone, wherever. I just, that's 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 my mantra. Black men don't do that to each other enough. We don't tell each other we love each other, we value each other, we appreciate each other. That's why everybody's so tough, yeah. you know? And then we end up hurting each other because everybody's so angry. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, one of the things, you know, y'all kind of know I've been coming you know, music with, on love songs and stuff mm-hmm. like that from, mm-hmm. from from for a while, but I felt that um being being able to be open and just express man vulnerabilities, um express like love for a woman, love for like God, like man, I, I don't have I got courage in doing that, I got faith in doing, that. I believe in doing, that. and it's black men. I feel like man, we need that because we've been taught like man, yo, it's weak to 
it's weak to go to therapy. It's weak yep. to to man. Like just be like, yo, man, love, bro. I love you. You know what? You know, I, I messed up here. Or just acknowledge certain things and just even be, you know, you know, caring to another to another black man. It's like those things is like we missing parts of our life by not acknowledging those aspects. And I feel like we can be well rounded men by by acknowledging those things. That vulnerability is is important, man. Cause if you stay if you stay like yo, I'm I'm a, I'm just like hard the whole time. It's like oh, I don't feel anything, man. At, at some point, that's it's gonna come out the wrong way. But that's why it's so easy for us to hurt each other. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I mean, so so many of um, you know, like I've been going to like point blank. I've been going to like visit a lot of prisons in California, mm -hmm. um, and around the country a little bit, but mostly California. And every, you know, a lot of people I've talked to that's just been incarcerated brothers doing life without parole man so many times that when you get to the root of their story they was like man I just was hurt when I was someone was like man I was sexually abused when I was a kid someone was like man I was abused when I was a kid and that was the only way in fact this one cat I remember his, his name was Bobby Gons he could rhyme he was he told he broke down his whole stories to the point where he was like man I got sexually abused when I was eight I didn't know how to express that like to talk to anybody so once I punched somebody out, that was my way of, of letting you know, letting my voice be heard in a way because nobody else was gonna hear me, and I was afraid to talk about those things. And when he did that, he said after that, that was his way of just expressing it. And eventually, you know, he ended up murdering somebody because he thought that was a way to handle it, violence. And I think you know, those are the, the for him to understand the root of that issue mm -hmm. is like for me, that's where I look at my life or look at our lives and say, man, we can. We can like, we can get this extracted at the root. Like, if we really deal with the real, mm -hmm. the real issue, like the real problem, and acknowledge those things, and know how to work through it. That's like when I when I met them, a lot of the brothers and sisters incarcerated, they were like transformed. Like they was, they was like, yo, this. I went in there and they was like, some of the brothers was like, man, they would they would introduce themselves and be like, yeah, I, I killed this brother, you know, Joe Wilson, and they would say the name. And I, I asked them, man, why you why you say the name? And they was like, man, we gotta we gotta acknowledge them as human beings. Right. At the time when I did that act, I didn't even look at that person as a human being. Wow. It's like it's for me to. They was like, it's for me to humanize myself and that person. We need their families to know that we, you know, we look at them as human beings. And I think you know, our culture or the way we grew up. I don't, I'm not blaming it on us, but we got we inherited a lot of pain and suffering and. And things we put up, like walls we put up, just from being here as black men, is is our ancestors had had to suffer that, through that, and that's been passed down. So some of the things we got to shake off, we got to peel it off, man. It's and it take a lot of work. So oh, yeah, a lot of times people repress repress these emotions and memories they have from early on, and they don't even know how it affects them. Yeah, because they don't even want to think about it. You know, think about slavery. Think about how they used to treat us as three fifths of a human being. So the reason they was able to treat us the way they did is because they didn't look at us as human. Exactly. That trauma got passed over to us. We started treating each other like that. We started treating each other like that. And they're like, man, you know, I was the other day. I was at at on um, the Potter's house, you know, um, in, in Dallas. Oh at man, Bishop amazing. Six, man, he's amazing. And he was saying something about how we, as black people, man, had you know, doing good for us was just surviving for mm -hmm. a while, mm -hmm. and that's still. To, that hit me because I was like, man, a lot of times our mentality has been just to survive because that's what we started from such a, a, like a deficit as far as, you know, the way society had placed us. And like you said, if we being like positioned as three fifths of a man, man, you got to work your own mentality up. You being stripped away from your family. How, how, how you find real like love and like a family and some core values in that. So we, man, we, we came from a deficit, but I feel like, man, we we the ones that have overcome so many things that if we just focus on those things, that's that's just where my head is, is focusing on like the best in us, mm -hmm. and then drawing off that, and then the worst, the worst in us. Let's work through it. Let's don't like, don't be like, oh man, well this dude on he on the he on the opposite side of me, so I'm I'm about to take him out. I'm about to, you know. But what allowed I'm, you to to, to open up? Because we seen you opened up in this book, and you talked about being molested as a child. Yeah. What gave you that courage to to talk about that? Man, you know what? It's, I really, honestly, as Angie just said, some memories you tuck away, I didn't even realize that happened in my life till 
till like I was doing a movie and and I the movie was about sexual abuse. And I was discussing it with, with the actress and we was talking about it. I was like, wait. I just went to that moment and was like, man, that that happened to me. So when it when it came to to the surface, it wasn't like I was talking about it with everybody. Um, but as I was writing this book, my my um premise or you know what my heart was like, man, I gotta I want to tell my stories so that other people will be all right with telling their stories and feel like, man, even if it's not the exact same story, but be okay with being like, man, I've been through some stuff. Mm -hmm. And for me, a lot of, the fact that a lot of black people too, and brown people too, go through these, women too, go through these like sexual abuse, go through um, sexual molestation, but people are afraid to talk about it. Mm -hmm. And I felt like, man, I gotta, I gotta go out there and do it because Man, the only way for people to heal is to talk about it. Right. And and when it when you see one man talking about it, somebody you respect too, or somebody you you might honor in a way, you like, all right, man, I can I can actually talk, I can share this story. Cause I think I think you know, like as artists, as people in the public eye, we we always get to show the the victories, mm -hmm. and we showing like, man, I I got the Oscar award, da da da. This you know, I'm showing like, yeah, I did this good. I'm doing my speeches. But I feel like it's important to show the the wounds mm -hmm. and the pain and the, and the fears because other human beings go through that. And people are human beings, so when they see you going through it, they like, okay, man, I could be better. I could do it. And I also wanted to offer tools. You know, it wasn't like I was in the book. I'm not like this is how you get through it. I'm like, man, I'm still working on this, getting right. through it. I did just recognize. Did you forgive the person that? Molested you, and did you have that conversation with him, or did the person pass? No, he. Uh, I haven't had that conversation with him, but it was. I definitely forgave from afar, like, cause I'm like, you know, this is this happened in my life. I don't, you know, I don't know what happened to that person. Um, so I mean, I don't know what happened to that person to make that person want to do that. But, but I was like, man, I can't carry that. Like what I was just saying about carrying it, and then you know, it was deep, cause I had a talk with my mother about it before the book came out she ain't never know about it. Mm. So I'm like. They never do. Yeah, they never do. You know, <laughs> like, never do. And it's something you don't want to, you know, you didn't want to tell them as you were, you and you were shorty, but I was talking to her and she was telling me stories about her. Mm. So it was, I was like, man, this is a cycle. This is a cycle that, that like, I want to be one of the ones that stop it. Right, and yeah. you have a daughter too and you reference your daughter a lot in the book. Yeah. So just imagine your daughter goes through something and doesn't want to mention it to you. Yeah. Did you have a conversation with her too before the book? I did, out? yeah, we had a, a lot of conversations about it because, um, you know, I actually played her a song, because I, I, I have an um, album that's inspired by the book, and I played her a song that ca it's called Memories of Home that, deal with, that deals with the subject. Cause I hadn't told her, and she just started like crying. And I sat down and talked to her about it, and she was, uh, you know, she was like, "I didn't even know that happened to you. Why didn't you tell me about about it?" And I was like, "You know, I'm just starting to come to grips with with sharing that. I really had to allow that to surface myself, you know." And um, she was, she was like, "Man, that's courageous." She just said this to me last night, like, "Yo, I'm really proud of you, cause you know, you you going out there saying that, and that, that's courageous, Dad." I was like, "Man." I felt good about it because it's a vulnerable place to be in. Mm -hmm. You know, like you said, Charlamagne, mm -hmm. we in hip hop, we in like, right. in, in a culture as black men, we like, yo. So for me to share that is like, okay. But then it, I also <clears throat> have to be like, I, you know, I, I can't worry about what someone think of me if I'm doing it with the right intention. So she's definitely more than, more than anything felt like grateful that I shared the story. Mm -hmm. She ended up you know, talking to her mother about it and seeing, you know, just trying to work through it in her mind too. Well, all these stories are good though, and the reason I say that is it opens things up for me in conversations to my daughter. Yeah. Like every time, I, don't, I know Charlamagne has three daughters, I have three daughters, I, I'm overprotective, like did anybody touch you, are you okay? Yeah. Is, did somebody say don't tell daddy? Like, I'm over it because I hear all these stories and I want to make sure my kids are good, you know? Yeah, and I, I feel like these are discussions that we didn't have as kids and right. we want our kids to, to know, I'm glad as parents we could be like, hey, if somebody touch you, you 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 can always come to me. Don't ever. That's not your fault. You know, like, mm -hmm. and, and we can learn. Like, we could discuss with each other the best ways to to have those conversations. Right. You know, and get the information from whatever sources. Because a lot of you know, a lot of times I feel like in our communities we haven't had the the resources or haven't access use access to the resources to get like like professional help. 
Right. You know, and, and when people go through those traumas, sometimes they need professional help as well as us as parents giving them like, okay, this is what, this is what, because sometimes, as we know as parents, some kids ain't going to want to share some things, but mm -hmm. but you hope that they do. Mm -hmm. But I do, I love that you, you know, provide that space for, mm -hmm. for our kids. And that's what I, this conversation is like, man, I want kids to be like, man, I, I got to go tell somebody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you're opening up a new door. Because I, I was molested when I was eight, but it was by a woman. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't think growing up I'd have been secure enough to yeah. tell that story if it was done at yeah. the hands of another man. So what yeah. gave you the security? At what point in your life did you say, I'm secure enough to say, you know what, this is what happened to me? You know, I just, I I believe the security came and just, man. It wasn't it, your fault at all. It was like you were yeah. nine or 10 years old. It, yeah, I mean, I, the, at this point, I think it's just faith in, in who I am, faith in, in God and my spirituality. It's something that I feel like the attacks that or whatever comes from the outside, at some point, if I'm strong enough in the inside to, to and know who I am, then I'm then I'm good. Cause it did, it does take you know, it takes like some faith and some and some courage to step out there and say, yo, this dude did this to me, you know. Cause even when I played the song for for some of my homies, they was looking like, man, Rosh, I ain't know that happened to you, you know, like, and I was feeling a little like, okay. And the first thing they did was was joked a little bit, and then they kind of saw it was a real subject and was like, "All oh, right, I gotta chill." So I think you know it's been my faith in 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 myself and God and being like, you know, man, sometimes leaders gotta step out there. Simple as that. And I mm -hmm. I feel like we as voices are the leaders. We got voices out here, and and we are the voice of, of a lot of people. So if we step out and say it, man, I've been getting so many texts from from, from I got. I got people within my team that I ain't even know talking to me about like they've been molested. Mm -hmm. Like guys telling me this and I'm like, man, we ain't never had no talk mm -hmm. like right. that. Right. We ain't never had. And some guys think that when they're young, like Charlamagne at first might've been like, oh, I liked it right. until this, but you didn't, like you were a little kid, so you don't really know later on in life yeah. what it is that that long lasting impact is. You might think this grown woman doing something to you, cause sometimes people like to act like that's something that's fly that happens, yeah. like a teacher yeah. and a student, and yeah. it's really not. Yeah, but that's just no. the way the world is positioned. But that's why I say it's, it's different when it's a guy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, how, how did that affect you growing up? Well, I mean, like I said, for many, many years, I tucked it away. I, I tried to forget it, like, and didn't even think about it. And it wasn't even like I tried to forget it. It was just forgotten mm -hmm. in many ways. So, um, you know, I, I, I love women, so that's, you know, and I'm, so I, that didn't affect me in any way as far as that goes but you know I'm not homophobic either I'm like yo I respect anybody who's who's on that level but it didn't it didn't like detour what I who I love and who I care about I think more than anything I just felt violated once I recognized what it was as an adult I feel violated that you know as a kid mm -hmm. I wasn't making a choice to be in any type of activity with anybody mm -hmm. you know so is I think it was that more than anything the the aspect of what you're saying if, of it being a guy was more like something that I had to be like, okay, man, I got to go. I'm going out here saying this, man. Like, I got to know for the, for the rest of my life this is something that I may have to talk about to people. Like, actually, people in line for the book signing is coming up to me now talking to me about that. Mm -hmm. And more than anything, I want to be prepared to – I'm not a therapist, but I want to be prepared to get them some type of – like guidance to low, yo, this is where a good place to go to to get some help or or some support in that way. And it's also a good case study because I'm I'm the I'm the type of person that believes people are born homosexual. Right. But I got a bunch of homies that be like, nah man, he I'm telling you somebody touched him when he was young. Yeah. You know? So yeah. you a good case study. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You I know? mean I mean I think that uh you know, I I believe it's some people that are born that way. Um and then it's probably some people that like figure out in the, in their life that this is who they want to be, and I you know I feel, you know people should have the choice to to choose what they choose, man. As long as they ain't hurt nobody, I'm good with what you do. You know that's what you do, and I and I respect that. And and, and for me, like it was it, it didn't affect me in a way that was like mm -hmm. okay, this is something I, I want to do. It was just tucked away. Yeah, it was just tucked away, and it was like. My desire is for women. That's what I, I, you know. Can we talk about that for a second? Yes. Because yes. you do talk about going to therapy and finding out that you were addicted to love. Yes. So love was sex. 
it was so it's playing with both. being addicted to love. <laughs> <laughs> love or sex? Hey, it was it was it was more love addiction than 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 the sex thing. I mean, the sex thing is obviously a, a wonderful thing, but to, to be honest, the pattern I found myself in and what, what was called love addiction, who my therapist broke it down, was was like that feeling of being like, oh, I'm in love, and and this that honeymoon period that mm. people call it. I was addicted to that feeling. When that feeling would go away and the real part of relationships came, I was like, okay, do I want this or not? Like, I wasn't ready to do the you work. You was out. When, yeah, it was re- I wasn't ready to mm-hmm. do the work when it came It to was me. the pursuit of it and the beginning phases. Yeah, and the pursuit of it and the beginning phases. And, I, and that didn't mean I, I obviously cared for the, the person, because I, I wouldn't just be like, I'm love addicted to anybody, but I cared for the person, but when things got when things got tough and it's time to work through stuff, I wasn't willing to work through it. And I would make up, make excuses like, oh man, that's interfering with my work. <laughs> you know, that's, you know, like this is, uh, relationships ain't good for me. I don't make my best albums when I'm in a relationship. You know, oh, like, okay, you one of those, you one oh, of those, it's not you, it's me type <laughs> nigga. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying, exactly, exactly, you know. So I was, you know, I was in going through those cycles and, and man, thank God I went to therapy because right. I was able to identify, um, you know, that what that pattern was and why I was feeling that way. So now, you know, in relationships, I can be, I can be like, okay, this is what this is how I really feel in, in the present. This I ain't gonna bring up the old past things that happened, like, cause some of that old past stuff was just showing up without me even knowing. Mm-hmm. It was like, okay, if I've been in a relationship before that was like really needy and heavy and that didn't feel good. Then I also expect that the next relationship gonna be like that, but that ain't necessarily how it has to be. Well, you got some love advice from Michelle Obama. She helped you out. On, on, Hold on, on now before we jump to that, because a lot of people think that that's game. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Playing the role of oh, I'm I'm, I'm I, I love you, but I'm not ready. That is you know game. What I'm saying? That is <laughs> no. game. That is game. <laughs> no, no, that ain't that that is game. Say, no, man. Let me tell you, that ain't game. It's more like it's not you. It's me. I love you, but I got this thing. That's game. And calm, no, no, no. And calm. You've had a great roster throughout your career. Yeah, now. yeah. I definitely have. I mean, I've had <laughs> some incredible <laughs> women. I, mean, I must say, incredible women. Mm-hmm. And I respect each and every one of them. You know, some of them obviously are married now, so I respect that space. And we good. We all, all of them, I'm friends with and. And I love, man, they just incredible people, but. Did you hit I, all of them with that game? I mean, it was more that truth. My game is truth. I give them that truth, you know? That's, that's what my game is, it's truth. That's it, that's what I got. That's well, now I said I don't got no game, it's just some women understand my story. Exactly, that's it. Ooh, that, was, that was a line right that's there. That was cold. That was cold. So Michelle, you actually called Michelle Obama for advice? Oh man, yeah, well, I, I talked to her. How does that happen? At the White House. I, I talked to her, yeah, a couple <laughs> times about like relationships, cause you know what happens is she like, Common, what's up? You know, you, you, you how old are you? 40, 42, whatever, you know, this, at the time. Damn, she was like, you with that. She was like, how old are you? I said, how, <laughs> yo, what's going on? Why aren't you? And, and I'm giving her my reasons. And she like, nah, man. It felt on. like you didn't agree with her advice I, about I, compromising. But what was her advice? Well, I got the quote right yeah. there. The quote yeah. is, uh, oh, no, that's not it. I, I, she said that you have to right compromise. To she has in. given me a lot of wisdom. One great thing that she told me as I was going through this journey was that you have to understand you're not going to get anybody that's perfect because you're not perfect. So understand that there's some certain things that you will compromise in choosing that partner. But as long as the core values that are most important to you, that person you know, marks off on that list, then you're good. Yeah. I mean, I agree with that advice, but it, it, mm-hmm. t- it takes me time to work to get mm-hmm. to live that <laughs> advice, you mm-hmm. know, like. Um, but it did help me because it's something for me to always go back to and be like, yo, because I think I was looking for, I mean, I had, like you said, I had incredible people <laughs> for women, but then at a certain point, I'm, I'm like, if something going wrong, I'm like, oh man, she ain't gonna last this long. We ain't gonna last this long because of this. So I, I could start making excuses or reasons why it ain't gonna work. And I think being able to say, you know what? This person is, it, it, this person may not have this right now, but that's okay. Cause we, you know, we can work through it at some point. That's what I feel like I'm coming to the understanding of. I want to see, what, cause you said, but I'm beginning to understand that compromising myself to become inauthentic, to live and exist as something other than who I am, isn't love. And since a compromise is filled with dangers and pitfalls, it leads to resentment, it leads to unhappiness, it leads eventually to that feeling of losing oneself. Yeah. Well, I mean, I definitely don't believe in losing losing mm-hmm. myself. That's where that's where I failed in relationships. You know, like where where I've like gone too far thinking I'm like, okay, I'm I'm, do, I'm being the right partner, I'm being the right man in this relationship, and I, 
but I'm giving exactly. away some of the things of my of myself. So I don't believe you don't compromise yourself, but you can compromise to to like be able to agree to do certain things. You know, like what some compromises you've made. I want specific like, examples. Like a sp specific example would be like, okay, <laughs> you want to you want to go to this event, and I really want to go out and watch the game but I'll go to this event. That's mm -hmm. a compromise for me. All right. And then sometimes... Go the, be the arm candy for the night. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, that's a compromise. But then, you know, uh, and also it's it's times where I might be like, okay, I want to, um, with the with the, with your family, you want to go spend this, this holiday? And I'm like, well, I got to spend this time with my family too. Mm -hmm. So I'll be like, I'm going to spend this time with my family and then make sure I got time with your family too. So that's... That's some of the compromises I've had since I've been talking to, <laughs> to Michelle Obama. Does Barack, does, does, does Barack Obama know about these goddamn relationship conversations you having with his wife? <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, I think Barack cool. He's probably looking at me like, "Go ahead, come and get you know, get some wisdom because you need to be chilling with a lady." What year was this? This was like it's, that. That was like three, two, three years ago. It started. So he was still in the White House. Yeah, yeah. It, it was. It, it was he definitely was in the White House when we, when she first started talking to me about it. He was in he was in the White House. I would have hit you with a little light audit, you know what I'm saying? Had secret service. A little light man. audit to check him out. Just to make sure, you know what I'm saying? Just to make yeah. sure. Yeah. <laughs> but then she been, you know, she been telling me other stuff, you know, so be patient like and like take your time and those things. So he man but, but Barack, you know, he he a, he a real dude, you know. I like him. Man. Michelle she had to be having those conversations with you cuz she had some some women she wanted to hook you up with. Like those conversations just don't come out the blue. Well, she didn't. She didn't like come to. <laughs> she didn't like come to the table like, yo. All right, well, I got somebody for you. Like, uh, <laughs> she just was like, yo. And then she, I, she probably did think of somebody at one point, but I wasn't around enough for her to be like, okay, come on, y'all go out on a date and mm -hmm. all that stuff. But it's all good. I think she just wanted to see me happy. That's my Chicago mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. yeah, has, yeah. has loving yourself? Cause you talk about self love a lot. Has self love made it easier for you to love other people? Yes, bro. That, that for sure, man. Like when we when we kept talking about hating, and you know, when people say, "Man, he hating on," man. Anytime I felt somebody was hating, it was because they they was hating on themselves. They ain't had that love for themselves. Right. So for me, it's been like, man. Anytime I found myself, like, cause it's shoot, man. Like it's times where I want to roll, and somebody else get the roll, like in an acting role or whatever. Somebody <clears throat> succeeding in something that I want to do that I could naturally be like, man, I want that. I wish I had that, but man, when you start loving self in the in the greatest way, in the best way, like man, you know that like, hey, ain't no, ain't, can't nobody feel that slot. My, what's for me is for me, and you start like being like, all right, man, good, good job, you did, you did well, man, mm -hmm. do your thing. So it definitely has helped me to be more secure, more confident, and just um, yeah, just be free, like be free. I don't like. That's why I can talk about these stories, or mm -hmm. that's why I can go and be like, man, I believe in God, man, and and I can go wherever I want and say that, and and not be running from from self. How difficult was the realization about your daughter and her feeling like you weren't there enough for her when she was um, growing up? That was that was tough for me, man, because because I thought I was doing a good job, you know, I, providing. You, like, yeah, you providing, and and you you taking those moments to to really do show love and you like, um, okay, we going to do these things that you like to do. And you think that spending time is really doing it, but so it's still some of those other moments that she needed and just, you know, the fact when she said it, it was, man, it was, it, I was hurt. I was, I was mad. Cause some of the things she was saying to me was like, man, I can't believe you think I, I would do that. So I got defensive, but then at some point I was just like, you know what? I need to listen to her. Cause this is how she feel. No matter what I think, mm -hmm. Or what I think I've done, this is how she feels. So the only way to truly love her is to listen to her. What was she saying? What, what, what she was some of the things she, she said you were doing? She was basically like saying, you know, like I didn't. She was saying some things about how when she was younger, I didn't fight enough with with her mother to to like make sure that she was spending time with me. Mm. You know, and that you know, man. It, at one point, she was talking about how I um, didn't like want to pay for her to take the SAT test, and I was like. Amoye, you know better. Like you like you know how much I paid for. Her. But then I had to like, I was not. I was. I, I made sure I didn't like try to put her mother in the situation. Right. Like yo yo, I was like I ain't being a part of that. I ain't on that. So so I just ultimately I was just like talking to her, telling her, 
you should you you know me and you know that how much I love you. So it's no way that I would not do those things. Right. So I was it was man, it was just some of those things you think as a daughter growing up, she probably just looked at, from a, looked and was thinking like, man, this this my dad ain't doing what I want. And man, one of the things that really struck me was she was like, man, it hurt me when I saw you out with your girlfriend's kids. Mm. And I was like, yeah. yeah, I was like, Oof. Yeah, that, yeah. Oof. how do you answer that one? I was like, man, I, I, you know, I was just trying to move forward with my life, you know, but like I was like, that I didn't love you any less, but mm -hmm. if somebody I love has kids, we might be out. And and man, that was some real, you know, real yeah. conversations. But the thing is, I feel what what I feel good about is me, me and Amoye, we having these real conversations. Right. Now. So it's better in our relationship. Like the fact that we talked about all this, and when she when she hears it, she's like, she. She actually feels like more confident and stronger, and, and I know that my love is what's gonna help her be the best woman she could be in, right. in relationships. So it's like that confidence I want want her to have. And now that I know she, we working through our stuff, you know, it just makes me feel better. Cause I knew ultimately I knew it was gonna be some stuff because me and her mother split up when she was one, and that stuff, no matter what, those relationships ain't always easy, right? right. Mm -hmm. So so all the stuff she might have been getting. I was like, man, when she, at, at a certain age, we gonna have to confront this. And I'm just glad that we both can confront it and she like open enough to talk to me about it. I can talk to her about it. How old it. is she now? She's 21, she graduating from Howard tomorrow. Nope. Wow, wow. <laughs> yeah. congratulations. Thank Congrats, you, man. Thank Congrats. You. you better hurry up and be there. Yeah, I know, I am, I'm there. <laughs> this book tour for a <laughs> day. Hey, hey, I slated this book, this book tour got shut down as soon as I, as soon as we knew the date for her, obviously. So. <laughs> Ain't nothing else happening but that that graduation. Congrats, that whole, man. That whole Sorry, weekend. I can't make it. I gotta go on my book yeah, tour. Book tour. <laughs> no, no, I can't do that, man. <laughs> is part of you seeking self healing because you want to be the type of man you want to see your daughter with? For sure, I want to be. I want to be. Um, I want to. I know how much you know. Women like at this if they grown up around their father, <clears> see a father figure, how much they attracted to those those type of people. Um, and in all truth, even me, my mother is someone who impacted me a lot. So I see in myself women that I like that are strong and women that, you know, do their thing and like having a, a strong perspective. So that that being said, I definitely, I, try, I set an example for my daughter all the time and just, I try to do it without like telling her, yo, this type of man you want. I'm just like, uh, mm -hmm. open the door for her. She get, she get, she be frustrated. Like, man, I gotta wait for you to open the door. I'm like, yeah, you do. And like just do <laughs> regular things that I think mm -hmm. I want the way I want to see a man treated. I just do it in action, and I think you know eventually I know it's, it it seeps down into her heart and soul because it's she's told me now she like she when she sees certain people or homeless people or something she kind of just want to give money because she saw me doing those things like growing up right. as a kid. So a lot of the stuff I feel like that I'm that I'm in, implanting in her or you know pouring into her is is really about. Um, just action, like she's seeing me do those things. Right. Cause that's such a tough question, man, when people say, are you the kind of man that you would want your daughters to be with? Man, that's, man, that was a, that's, that's a real, and, and and the thing is, you know, the evolution of, of me, cause you know, I, I'm like any other dude at, at some point early on, like, that, man, like I told my daughter, you know, you dating this guy, he young, man, he he might, you know, that's, that's where he is Absolutely. right now, he ain't gonna make all the best choices. You might want to be with some other girls. This is what it is, you know, and you got to make a decision for yourself if you want to be in that type of relationship because some young men are going to be there. I was that I was that young man, of course, and into, a, into an adult age. And like I said, beyond just wanting to be with other women, even just being able to, to love in a, in a mature and a, in a complete way, it took me years to get there. Right? Yes. You know? And um, that being said, I, I I feel like being that man is 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 a process. It's it's, it's a daily mm -hmm. practice. As I'm saying about love, it's a daily practice. Absolutely, of like figuring out okay, this is where I am at this moment. But I think one of the greatest things I've got is being able to communicate those things now, mm -hmm. instead of being like having something harboring up in me and not being able to say it to to a woman I'm in a relationship with is like. I gotta be able to say like, yo, I need this time for this. You good, you straight, I, I'm making sure you straight, I, but I need this. Or I'm feeling pissed off about this. 
like being able to say those things like give people understanding like mm-hmm. that that man it's just better the relationship. I mean, this is better to express your feelings. Period. Like they yeah. tell us, even in school, when you grew up as a grade school, like, oh, think positive and be positive. I mean, I be feeling positive yeah. at this moment, so I should be able to express that. Man, that's man, that's what I feel. Like some of the, I mean, our parents did the best they could with us, but some of the things that that we got, like, man, you do it because I say you, because I told you to do it. Yeah. That those things don't work in the mm-hmm. minds of us, our generation to all all the way to. To you know the kids now, uh, man, you can't just say that. That ain't. Yeah. Even, I mean, you can, you still can instruct your kids and, and have them do things, but man, they they might want to know why, and, it, and it's okay for them to know why. And and like you said, you like, man, sometimes you ain't feeling good. And it, and I think, I think our our parents and and the, some of the some of the generation didn't have like that that progressive way of of thinking and parenting and like. When I told my um, mother that I wanted uh, my daughter to like, man, to have some therapy, you know, she was like, man, you know, we don't need to do that. Like, like she wasn't all the way into that. But now I think she, she, th- those things have changed with her. She sees it, you know, in a in an open minded way. But some people think that like, no, nah, that's not good. We don't need that. But, but I think that um, we know, needed the most. We needed the most, bro. Like when you, I be talking to to some of the shorties and seeing what hearing what they going through. I'm mm-hmm. like. Man, you need some. You need somebody to talk to, mm-hmm. man. Like, there's no way you could get through your day if you seen your cousin shot, right? Your, your your dad, your dad, your pops ain't around. Just going through all that stuff, and you you supposed to be regular and be normal and be good for the day. It's like, man, that, that's what these kids start, start self medicating. They start smoking. Yeah. They start drinking. They start hanging around gangs because they feel like that's their brothers and. Usually goes down the wrong way. They start yeah. redistributing that pain, mm-hmm. yeah. and they start going to hurt people that look right. like them just because they hurt. Man, that's man, that's the that's the greatest source of why cats is out here hurting each other, killing each other, is because they in pain. Mm-hmm. And then if so, I believe if we go treat that pain as much as as much as we reshaping and re reconfiguring the community, all this thing is a, it's a holistic approach. Like we got to create jobs, we got to give mental health support. We gotta give like different ways of expressing like, like they need to know about cinema for cinematography. They need to know about like what it is to be a script writer or whatever. You know, I'm just mentioning things in the entertainment. Absolutely, put social. Em- they need to put social emotional learning in the schools. Yes, man. I'm, I'm. You know, I'm actually opening up a school called AIM. It's in Chicago. It's called Arts in Motion. And one of one of the things that we um are doing is it's opening in September. One of the things that we're doing is like. We gonna have that social and emotional intelligence, like those type of courses where they could just talk things out, have that type of therapy um, space, yoga space, you know, have spaces where they do know about learning about cinematography, learning about script writing, learning about costume design, because so many of the kids don't get the expo- exposure. Like for me, right. I was like, man, if if I ain't have my mother saying, man, I'm putting you in this computer class I'm putting mm-hmm. you in this um you playing bitty basketball man I would man I don't know where my life would be point mm-hmm. blank and it wasn't like I was out here like the toughest guy or nothing but it's just I got dudes the same type of dudes as, as me they locked up because they was around the wrong stuff or mm-hmm. just didn't have that that access or just didn't have something that they was exposed to that seemed better and I and I and I look at I I've been going around talking to some of the youngest in Chicago and it's like, man, it's, they just be like, man, we want some opportunities. We want some programs. Right. And I'm like, man, that's what we got to bring to them, man. That and, you know, like eating healthy and also I tell everybody all the time, even with, with real estate, like we're never taught that. Yeah. You know, we're never taught that. We rent for 30 years of our lives and we don't own our own communities. We don't own our own blocks and we don't have those programs to teach us how, you know. Man, I think those, that was one of the things I like. Um, I got to go to Kaepernick's uh what what he was know doing, your rights know camp. your rights campaign he did it in Chicago and I went and man I loved it he had somebody there instructing about like real estate and investing mm-hmm. those are th- what you say envy is true like in nutrition we putting that in our school too because I'm you know I'm on that like yeah. that that healthy Juicing. yeah yeah I'm on that juice of the healthy like so I, I want our kids to have those things and like be exposed to those things because man when they get it when I man when I'm around them kids and, I, and they and I see all the the potential and the, and the intelligence they have and the things they working with already, I'm like, man, <clears throat> if you get 
the stuff that we got access to, the stuff that we know about, mm-hmm. you get that, man. You about mm-hmm. to be, you gonna be dangerous. It's gonna be crazy. Like, Absolutely. So that's what I'm, man. That's what we doing for with the AIM school and you know any that's anything exciting. we can. I know Is it you charter gotta, school? I gotta go to that. That's yeah. a charter school. Yeah, I know. You, I know you gotta get out of here. I gotta ask you one last question because a lot of things you say resonate with me in such a way because it's the same thing I'm going through right now. But you talk about your father. Yes, and you say the sins of the father represent a cycle that you are destined to break or repeat one or the other, and your work remains incomplete. So, what cycles are you currently fighting to break in your parenting? Yeah, my parents. Um, the ab- abandonment cycle is one of them because, man, I love my dad. My dad was cool. We, man, we we got along really good. But I didn't know that I was or had a void. Something was missing because when I was one, him and my mother split up, and I didn't have that relationship with him like a presence, you know, with him being there. And, you know, the fact that my daughter is like, kind of saying some of the same things that your presence wasn't, you weren't physically there, you know, in in ways that I needed. It's like, okay, how can I stop the cycle? Now I gotta be able to talk to her about this and tell her, and hopefully she understands reasons why. So that, um, and even if she, there's no reason why, really. I mean, she might understand from a different perspective and, and know that I'm hearing her. And and her being heard, I think that could stop the hurt. Like, we was talking about distributing the pain. It's like, that that pain I had from my father, I didn't even know I had that pain, but it was there. Well, Amoye can acknowledge that she has that pain and heal that pain. So when she go in her relationship, she'll be a whole woman. And um, that's really my way of, of, of stopping it um, and just recognizing those things. And, and and when I do find myself like feeling a certain way about something my father did or whatever, which I've worked for to forgive my father. My father passed in 2014, but we was definitely in a great space. But even then, post that, I had to still work on forgiving and, and knowing those things. But with that, I just feel like I carry a, a better happiness for myself and I'm able to give that to the people I love. Well, we I love these conversations, us, man. Yeah, absolutely. These are the conversations yeah. you're supposed to be having, man. Thank Therapy, you, man. self-love, healing. I, yeah. I appreciate you coming yeah, for you. having these conversations. Well, man. let love have the last word. It's out right now, so make sure you pick it up. And thank you for joining us, brother. Man, thank y'all for having me. Man. I love thank you, black love, man. Love you, brother. Yes, love sir. You, brother. All right, love. it's coming. Love. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning.